Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use return values in your methods. And this is really the last piece in the puzzle when it comes to talking about how to use methods. We've already talked about the basic syntax for calling class methods, and we've talked about how to use parameters to pass values to our methods. Now we're just going to talk about how to use return values to get values out of our methods. We're going to talk about what a return value is, we're going to talk about the process and the syntax for using return values. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how you can identify what type of value a method returns just by looking at its documentation. So what's a return value? For once, your book actually has a pretty decent definition. It says a return value is a result that the method is computed for use by the code that has called it. In other words, the return value of a method is the value that it produces when it's done. Uh, another way of thinking about it is it's sort of like the opposite of a parameter. If you think about parameters as being the input to a method, then return values are the output. Or another way of thinking about it is if you think about accessor methods as being questions that you can ask to an object, then the return value is the answer. So what does that mean? What actually happens? This is probably the most important part of this lesson, is that top line there. Return values replace the method call in that place in your code where you called the method when the method is finished running. In other words, whatever value gets returned by the method gets substituted for the method call in that statement where it got called. And you'll see that uh, in the examples that we're going to take a look at. What that means is that uh, once that value comes back from your method, it's the same as any other value would be of whatever type that is whether it's an int or a double or even another object, you can use that return value for anything that you'd be able to normally use that type of a value for. You could assign it to a variable, or you could print it out, or you could even incorporate it into some more complicated expression. Anything that you can use a value of a certain uh, return type for, um, you can use the return value for. So. Let's take a look at some examples of that. Let's say we have a statement here, like this one here. It says double result gets math.pow 2 comma 4 divided by 7. Pow is a method of the math class, which does exponentiation. It takes whatever the first number is, raises it to the power of the second number, and the return value is the result of that calculation. So in this case, 2 to the 4th is 16, which means as far as Java is concerned, this statement here is exactly the same as if we had just written double result gets 16.0 divided by 7. The 16 replaces the entire method call in that expression on the right hand side of the assignment operator. Let's take a look at a couple more examples that are actually from uh, a working program. So here's a program uh, that shows you a couple of different ways that we're going to do that substitution of return values. Um, let's run it through the debugger so we can run it step by step. So I've got a string, string starts off equal to Hotchkiss. We create a temporary string called part, and we're going to call the method substring. Substring takes as its parameters the position of the first letter that we want to extract, um, in, starting at 0. So 0 is going to be the capital H. And then it includes up to but not including the letter at the uh, second number's position. So if you count over 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 um, means that's the C. So we're going to take everything from the capital H up to and not including the C. Or in this case, um, that's H-O-T. It's hot. Um, and what happens is, again, that string, the return value, gets substituted for the method call. So it's the same thing as if we had just said part gets hot. And that's what happens if you look over here. Part gets hot. Here's another example. So we're going to print the return value of calling the method contains. Again, contains is a method which takes another string, searches through the given string, and returns true if that string can, if the um, string contains what you're looking for, or false if it doesn't. In this case, Hotchkiss contains the word kiss, so it's the same thing as if we had just decided to print the word true because the return value true replaces the method call. Last example, I think you can see here, the return value from two uppercase is the string's uppercase value. Um, 
And so in this case, we're going to take the word Hotchkiss, convert it to uppercase, and then it's going to replace this here in this string. So it's the same thing as if we had said string school gets Hotchkiss in all uppercase plus the word school, which means we've created a new string that looks like Hotchkiss school. By the way, parenthetically, this is the reason why if you just call the um, method to uppercase on a string, it doesn't actually modify the string. If we had wanted to change our string for good, we would have had to say example gets example dot to uppercase. That's the only way you can modify a string by using the to uppercase method. So let's get back to our lesson and talk about the last part, which is how to identify return values. Every method that returns a value has something called a return type. And that return type just identifies what kind of value the method returns. Just like parameters have types, return values have to have types too, and you have to make sure that you return the right kind of value. You can't return a string if your method is pow, because um, that doesn't make any sense. So if you look at the documentation for a method, the return type always comes right before the name of the method when you define it. And if you look at the documentation for a method, you can actually see all the return types for all the methods in a class on the left-hand side. We'll take a look at that right now. So if we look at the string class, here we are. If I take a look at the method, oh, I don't know. Let's take index of. So if I look at the method index of, on the very left hand side here I can see int in this column which means I don't really know what but I know this method returns some kind of integer. If I want to find out what that value actually means then I should click on the method and read the documentation because if you look at the documentation for a method um, that's got good comments you will see at the bottom this uh, section called returns and that has a description of what the return value means. In this case, it says here, the string argument occurs as a substring, then it's the index of the first character in the first substring. Remember how we talked about how the letters in a string are numbered starting with zero? Well, index of returns the number of the beginning of whatever the first match is for the string that you looked for. So if we were looking at kiss, for example, in Hotchkiss, then index of would tell us the position of the first lowercase, lowercase k inside Hotchkiss. So just by looking at either the class description where all the return types are on the left hand column or if you look at the method the return type always comes right before the name of the method you can tell what that method returns. So just to recap return values are the output from a method they replace the function call uh, or the method call at the place uh, in your code where you called the method. And you can use them just like you use any other kind of value. And the way that you find out what that return value means is by reading the documentation for the method. All right, that's it.